Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross, and today I'm going to continue my segments of analysing the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Now, today I'm going to be analysing the Chaos Lords. Now, I'm looking at them predominantly from the Codex perspective of Chaos Lords and in part the Chaos Lord and Terminator armour. I know in the index there's a few other options. Uh, might return to them in another stage. But for now, I'm mainly concentrating on Codex for uh, sort of focused units. With that, that uh, with that, how this works is I basically will talk about the stats of the Chaos Lord and also the Terminator Armor one, uh, some of the weapons that are available to it, not all of them because there's loads. Uh, I'll also talk about my preferences later on, some of the abilities that go with them as well. I'll also talk about some of the preferred loadouts I like, a little bit about relics, uh, legion traits. Uh, warlord traits, psychic abilities and stratagems that sort of go with the warlord in general. So with that, uh, usually sometimes we're getting a lore as well but they're not special characters so we're not going to do that. So with that, I'm going to go straight into the stats analysis of the Chaos Lord, uh, not in Terminator Hour. So Chaos Lord is movement 6, uh, pretty average, what do you expect? Uh, weapon skill 2 and bliss skill 2, so again like a lord, you are expecting those easy to hit rolls. Strength and Toughness 4, which is kind of standard as long as you're not in full protective gear. Wounds 5, again average, you know what you see in most Space Wound characters, including the Chaos ones. Attacks 4, Leadership 9 and 3 plus save. Pretty nice, you know, what you expect from quite a bog standard Chaos Lord on there. Uh, not too bad. He's got access, he comes with a chainsword, bolt pistol and frag and crack grenades. You can replace the bolt pistol with a, anything from the pistols, combo weapons or melee options. I'll talk about that later. And you can replace chainsword with anything from the pistols and melee weapons. Interesting there, you can actually replace both the bolt pistol and the chainsword and pistols. So you could have like a dual wielding pistol chaos lord, which I might do in the future, which sounds awesome. Uh, this model may take a jump pack, power rating plus one. Uh, if it does so, its move characteristic is increased to 12 and it gains jump pack and fly keywords. Very interesting about this, I'm going to talk about jump packs a lot in this review video, uh, just because I think they do offer a lot to Chaos Lords. There is a key weakness, just watch out for things that do target flyers. I'm looking at you, June Crawlers, I know that too well. But generally, if you're hiding away and stuff, then yeah, you know, you don't need to worry about too much but adding, basically doubling your uh, movement and then later on basically getting uh, jump, uh, jump pack assault rule. Really handy, uh, but I'll go into all these sort of advantages later. Uh, in terms of abilities, you've got Death of the False Emperor. If you're playing Chaos, you know about that. If you're watching a Chaos review video, you should know about that. If you don't, read the codex. Kind of handy when you are fighting Imperials. Lord of Chaos, you can reroll hit rolls of one, uh, made for friendly Legion units within six inches. We see this as sort of a standard for sort of generic uh, HQ choices where you get this reroll or some kind of uh, order ability. Reroll hit rolls is fantastic, really, really good. Reroll hit rolls of one, can't complain. Also, Sigil of Corruption, uh, this one has a four up invul save. Excellent. Uh, can't argue with 50% of the time you are going to ignore wounds that would go through your armour. 4 pinball certainly does give you a lot more better protection. You also, when you've got jump pack, jump pack. So, uh, during deployment, if this model is a jump pack, you can set up in, uh, up high in the skies instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the end of any of your movement phases, this model can assault from, uh, assault from above, set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than 9 inches away from an enemy model. I feel we know a lot of us know how to infiltrate sort of now. Again, that with the Chaos Lord is really handy, uh, really good for synergy. I'll talk about some tactics for that later. Let's talk about the Chaos Lord and Terminator armor. Fills a very different role than the Chaos Lord. Some cases it's similar, some it's not. So Terminator armor is movement five, so you are losing an inch of movement uh, in the Terminator armor. You're basically giving up mobility in some regards to uh, protection. Weapon skill and bliss skill two. You're hitting the same as before. Excellent, because if you lost anything there, I'd be really upset. Strength and toughness four is what you see in Terminators. You need to have a different type of armor and also be a space marine to get higher toughness or death guard. Uh, but it's what you see in Terminator armor. On average, you're gonna be strength and toughness four. 
Six wounds, so you're gaining extra wounds by being in Terminator armor, which is excellent. Uh, four attacks. Really wish it was maybe one more, but I could be being greedy there. But yeah, four attacks. Leadership nine, and a two plus save. So having that extra save, you know, just means that a lot more wounds, especially low incoming firelight bolters are just going to ricochet off you, which is always, always helpful. Uh, Chaos, uh, Chaos Lord in Terminator armor is, is a single model armed with power sword and combi bolter. Quite cheap options there, uh, obviously a bit better than a chainsword and a bolt pistol, but certainly some options there. Uh, I'm not going to go into combi bolter and power sword statistics because there's so many options you've got. This model can replace its bolt, uh, combi bolter for one items from the combi weapons or terminator melee weapons, so you've got those choices there as well. This model may replace its power sword for one item from the terminator melee weapons as well. So that allows you to dual wield terminator weapons, you can have a power fist and a lightning claw I think so. Do I want to? I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that one so much as well, I'm just realising I can have a dual wielding pistol Chaos Lord that isn't Cypher. I like it. Uh, in terms of uh, abilities for them, uh, Death of the False Emperor, we've already not discussed it, uh, which is a terrible thing for me to say, but I have a read about it, obviously it affects the Imperial units. Uh, Lord of Chaos, you can reroll hit rolls of one, made for friendly Legion units within six inches of the model. Talked about that, order ability, super useful. Sigil of Corruption, this model has 4-up invo, we love that 4-up invo. And Teleport Strike, essentially like the Jump Pack Assault, during deployment you can set up, set up the Chaos Lords and Terminator, uh, Terminator Armour in Teleportarium Chamber, instead of placing in the battlefield at the end of movement phase, you can use Teleport Strike to arrive on the battlefield. Set them up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than 9 inches away from an enemy model. Again, I'm going to talk about more specifically these deep strike uh, synergy uh, sort of tactics you can do with Chaos Lord later on, or more imminently. So yeah, that is what you can get in terms of stats and abilities in the Chaos Lord, they're in the Codex. You've got a lot of options in terms of variety of war gear. With that, I'm actually going to go straight into sort of my preferred loadouts and suggested roles for the Chaos Lord. Uh, I'll then go into sort of some wee bits on relics and them as well as an additional part. So, loadouts and suggesteds. Uh, I've got my first loadout called Only the Rerolls, Backfield Edition. Chaos Lord with Bolt Pistol and Chainsword. Yep. Because you like Havocs, Predators, Forge Fiends, etc. You want those reroll ones and won't really help defending them either. Uh, basically, you know. As long as you know, reroll ones for friendly Legion units, as long as they've got the Legion rules, which I'm pretty sure Havocs, Predators, and Forge Fiends all do, I'm like 90% sure they do, then yep, they get that bonus as well. Ross has a check to make sure Forge Fiends, yep, they're Legion. Oh. So yeah, uh, it's basically making sure your backfield gets much, much, much better access to those rerolls because nothing's worse than having your last cannons hit on a one when you could have rerolled it and got a lot more threat. For a few points I would consider a power sword to help defend them, or maybe light, lightning claws to fight off like lighter uh, infiltrating units. Uh, it's really against who, depending on who you're facing. I like lightning claws, again sort of things with very low armour, uh, power sword if it's a bit heavier. Okay, okay, we've now got, uh, I'm here partly for the rerolls, uh, Assault Edition. Chaos Lord with bolt pistol, power weapon or lightning claws. So basic equipment stuff, uh, these are a bit more geared if you want to face your opponent. I personally like either lightning claws for reroll wounds or power fist. I think I said power weapon, but it's like anyone. I like power fist for good ability to wounds, threaten light vehicles, good AP and potential damage. I don't do plasma pistols, not really, I've never done it. I just think if you plasma pistol, when you arrange plasma pistol, you're destined to charge as well and uh, they'll always remove like the front guy and you lose an inch. I just don't see why, I could be wrong. Uh, you may also die if you supercharge. So I'm not really sold in sticking on a plasma pistol there. I'll just take a bolt pistol and uh, want to get in charge range. We then have only the rerolls drop edition. And that's the one I said I was going to talk about. Chaos Lord with jump pack with a combi plasma or 
Terminator armor with combi plasma and a power weapon of some type. So what is the goal with this Chaos Lord? Rain unholy reroll supercharged plasma on your foes. Terminators deep striking with Chaos Lord will be thankful for those rerolls and the damage they can unleash uh, can be a real pain. Add an endless cacophony as well. I mean, like, if you have like 10 Terminators all with combi plasmas, uh, don't fire the, the bolt apart, just fire the plasma apart. I mean, what's that? Is that like rapid fire loads? You're gonna get like 20, da -da -da, 20 shots of 10 of them, reroll the ones. If you supercharge them, you hopefully won't lose any and you will cause so much damage. Endless Cacophony, I think it's three command points for Slanesh models, allow you to fire again. Drop in those Terminators, drop in that Chaos Lord either with a jump pack or Terminator armor. That is a good wee alpha strike for Terminators. Uh, oh man, I really like the sort of prospect of it. Just annoyed, I don't own really Terminators anywhere near that configuration uh, or a Chaos Lord you can really do it either. Uh, I am working on it, I really want to give it a try and see if that tactic's viable. Certainly a Chaos Lord, uh, that drop tactic sounds delightful. So in terms of artifacts and relics I'd probably recommend for this one as well. I'll do this very lightly because quite frankly when it comes to relics I love them in Demon Princes. Flesh Metal Exoskeleton, Iron Warrior models only. The Brayer of the Flesh Metal Exoskeleton has a save characteristic of 2+, plus, uh, and basically can also, I think, recover a wound as well every turn. Yeah, in addition, this model heals one wound at the start of each of your turns. Really handy, so to add a bit more of a defensive one. You might consider on a Chaos Lord with a jump pack, so I think you can do that as well, because your opponent will try and target them to reduce the rerolls uh, later in the game. They may also just target your Terminators instead. But uh, having that little bit more defence is always super helpful. Talisman of Burning Blood, core model only. The bear of Talisman of Burning Blood can advance and charge in the same turn. Salt Lord's going to love that. Uh, I mean, being able to advance and charge is always very helpful. Other, you know, sort of, you know, Legion traits because it's corn, Mark of corn you've got to use. Can like it as well. Especially, uh, I think if you were to go like Alpha Legion, uh, you could then move Assault and get there quite quickly, which is kind of nice. But, you know, again, if you've got Demon Prince, mm. <laughs> then again, if you go Corn, you give up Sorcery as well, which ain't ideal for Demon Princes. Either way, that's not a bad one either. What I do like though, and I think this is an interesting option, is Pus Cleaver. Nurgle model with Power Sword only. Pus Cleaver replaces the bear's power sword and has the following profile. It's melee range, type melee, strength user, minus 2 AP and D3 damage. But what makes this interesting is this weapon wounds on a 2 plus unless the target is a vehicle, in which case roll to wound as normal. Now I think you're giving up minus 1 AP there and then you're doing more damage, but you're wounding on a 2 plus on almost everything. Let that sink in a wee bit there, that's kind of nice. You know, you're hitting on 2+, plus, rerolling ones, and then you're wounding on 2+, plus, uh, stripping off 2 AP and D3 damage. I really like that. I think I've got some more synergy tactics about that later on, but certainly for going into combat, that really makes Nurgle a sort of interesting choice for the mark. So yeah, I really like that one. Let me know on sort of relics that you like as a Chaos Lord loadout, I'm interested to hear. I've not tried many of them in Chaos Lord, I tend to overload them in Demon Princes, but uh, certainly on Chaos Lord. Let me hear your views and let other viewers also uh, read them as well, because I think we're all interested. We're here to learn. Legion Traits. Legion Traits will differ depending on your Chaos Lord's role that he wishes to perform. Although ultimately your detachment will kind of decide this, uh, but then again, I am discussing the Chaos Lord, so I kind of got to discuss what ones will help him the best. Renegade Chapter is Dark Raiders. This allows a unit with this trait to advance and charge in the same turn. Uh, say, uh, sorry, allow them straight to advance and charge in the same uh, turn. Generally, an awesome trait, giving a further mobility and threat range for your Chaos Lord. 
Managed with a jump pack, and the th jump pack in the third range is pretty high. Obviously, you can't get the full advantage of it uh, if you deep strike so because you can't advance, but you can certainly reroll that charge, which is handy. Uh, no way for Renegade chapters, you can just advance, so really, it's no use if you deep strike him. That was my bad, I was getting that confused with the talisman, of course. But uh, if you're coming out of a rhino, it's really handy as well because then you can mo uh, move out the rhino move, advance, and then basically get into super threat range. Make sure he does have a retinue, and obviously this does work mainly for combat oriented Chaos Lords, so you probably want to have him going along with like Possessed of Corn Berserkers or something. World Eaters, Butcher's Nails. When a unit with this trait makes a successful charge, you can make one additional attack with, the, uh, with each of its models in the subsequent fight phase. Well, you guessed it, it's going to be geared towards the combat monster guys. Uh, they're going to love this. Really, it's a flip between mobility from Dark Raiders, because obviously you get your uh, move, advance, and charge from mobility there, or get extra damage. It's a tough call, it really depends on your army composition and how you are deploying. If you're smart, then those extra attacks from many of your units might actually be hugely advantageous versus a higher chance to get in combat. I like both. I tend to use Dark Raiders more than anything in terms of my battle reports because I quite like Huron. But uh, you can't go wrong if you've got you know Berserkers all getting an extra attack and the fight twice, so essentially two. <sighs> nice. Night Lords, Terror Tactics, I'm a fan of Night Lords by the way, uh, lore wise. Models in the enemy unit must subtract one from their leadership characteristic for each unit with this trait that is within six inches of theirs to a maximum of minus three. I like this on a jump lords, uh, which kind of makes sense. The mobility does allow you to choose targets and work well to fear bomb expensive units. Horde units probably won't care. I just wish it was like three inches more to sort of, you know, if it was nine inches, it just means you'd be clipping more units and have a bit more of an effect. So, you know, positioning is absolutely key with this, uh, with this Legion trait. I think it's one of the hardest ones to get the full advantage of. But if you can, you can be absolutely devastating. But you just need to plan each move so carefully, like so, 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 so carefully. Uh, on jump packs, Night Lords, it all makes sense. Mobility just guarantees you get where you need to be. Emperor's Children, flawless perfection. Units with this trait always fight first in the charge phase, even if they didn't charge. If an enemy unit has, uh, ha if an enemy has units that, that have charged, but that have similar abilities, then alternate choosing units to fight with, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. Now I really like uh, this on a Chaos Lord, not as an aggressive trait, but a defensive one. Makes Chaos Lord a good choice as a backfield defender for Noise Marines or Havoc squads that may be threatened from an ambusher. Uh, Chaos Lord not only allows that, that all-important reroll ones, but if charged, you can possibly heroically intervene to push those ambushers back. Usually they would have all the chance to attack you first. Then you've got to go, all right, well, do you want to attack my noise marines or other units there? Or do you want to go for the Chaos Lord because otherwise he can smash you apart? It basically mitigates the enemy's choice in terms of the combats. Nine times out of ten, they're probably going to go with Chaos Lord first because you just don't want him attacking back. It's not going to be ideal, you know? It's even worse than it's a Demon Prince. Anyway, we're not talking about that today. That's coming up, I'm working on it. Warlord traits. So there's a couple of Warlord traits to discuss here. Uh, again, I talk about these more in detail than Demon Prince because I like my Demon Prince to be a Warlord or a special character. But we're talking about Chaos Lord here. Flames of Spite. If the Wound Roll from a Lee Weapon attack made by your Warlord is 6+, plus, inflict one mortal wound on the target in addition to any other damage. I really like this trait, uh, but also like it, uh, also like on Lightning Claw Lords. An extra attack, uh, getting an extra mortal wound is nice. However, add in bitch to the long war, you're wounding easier with rerolls, so I think you're wounding on 3+, plus and you get mortal wounds on a 5+, plus and you get to reroll failed wounds as well. You know, really, really good. It's just disappointing that Lightning Claws are not damaged too. If they were damaged too, this would be excellent for Vetch's Long War. Uh, just to really take down some more elite heavy units. Uh, you know, more wounds, uh, wounding on potentially threes, depending on your strength and toughness. 
Really, really nice. I actually really like this one a lot. Hatred Incarnate. You can reroll wound rolls uh, of one for attacks made by your warlords. Really nice for a combat heavy warlord uh, with high strength and high damage. Basically, swing hard and reroll those ones. Parafists will really enjoy this, though it would be interesting to see on Pus Cleaver, as, as I discussed it earlier. Uh, everything on everything bar vehicles, you would be hitting on twos, re-rolling, you'd be wounding on twos, re-rolling, you'd be getting minus two AP and D3 damage. That's interesting. So I knew there's a reason why I talked about Pus Cleaver. That along with Hatred Incarnate, uh, sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I will definitely need to give that a try, though I am working on my Death Guard army, so, you know, Nurgle's calling me another way. Uh, my next one is uh, Alf Legion, I am Alpharius. Not gonna go into it, uh, not gonna go into it, but I love it. Uh, you play Alf Legion, oh, uh, you know, if you play Alf Legion, always take this because you know how to have fun. Interestingly, wording indicates you randomly select a trait uh, with the first Warlord, then generate further. And generate as wording goes in the Warlord Traits paragraph, says you can roll or choose. So in your first Warlord, you've got to roll randomly to see what Warlord trait you get, and then when he, you know, gets killed, another, you know, another head comes up, you get to choose. Interesting how that one works. Uh, fair play. But I just love it for entertainment factor, you know. It's a lot of fun to play Alpha Legion. This is always my choice because I just enjoy it. It's funny. It may not be because there's more tactical sound choices sometimes. Word Bearers, the voice of Logar. Increase the range of any aura ability on your Warlord day treat by three inches. Uh, so I mainly like this because I play Call sometimes, not always. Um, whether it's good with Chaos Lord, I'm not so sure as it is so with uh, Call. Maybe if you've got one sitting back with Havoc's Predators and you need to spread out a wee bit, then yeah, Voice Logar kind of works quite well. But after all, you are a Chaos Lord, and if you're directing firepower, well, you're an Iron Warrior. Uh, no, uh, I'm joking. I like it. You know, it depends on what you're planning backfield. I think that's probably the more important one. That I'd probably see the best advantages for. Psychic abilities. So we're going to start with prescience in this one. Warp up charge 7. Select a heretic stash unit within 18 inches. Add 1 to hit rolls made for this unit until the next psychic phase. One of the best spells in our arsenal and probably best used elsewhere. Sure, if you're using an item that is minus 1 to hit like a parfist, then consider it, but those berserkers or possessed will probably prefer it. Possessed, uh, the Berserkers might fight it, you know, might fight against it, but they'll like it. I mean, if you look at them, they actually do like psychic abilities, just not casting them. Don't destroy me for that comment. Uh, though a bit more tempting for Death of False Emperor bonus, because then it becomes uh, 5 plus, and then there's ways to make it 4 plus. Uh, I think you can do that with Emperor's Children quite easily. Uh, it basically just means that you've got, you know, if you're facing Imperials, you've got much more of a chance to get extra attacks, which everyone loves. So yeah, there is a reason for that, but I generally like it on big, big units. Diabolic Strength, Warp Charge 6. Select a Heretic Stars model within 12 inches of the Psyker. Until the next fight phase, add 2 to the model Strength and 1 to the model's attack characteristic. So you're going to want this on Aggressive Lords, but what's best? Power Fist, maybe not only in situations where you're facing tougher than average opponents, uh, because basically if you're facing a vehicle or you're uh, facing something that's I think toughness 5 or toughness 6 then you can consider it. Power Sword would really like this uh, on them as Power Sword's hitting at strength 6, it would be really really nice. Lightning Claws as well would also quite enjoy this. If you go with Relics then you may want some, uh, if you go with Relics then you may so some serious improvements. Yeah. So yeah, there's chances with this, if you've got some relics, there's ways to also work with this a wee bit better because some of them have plus one strength and you might be able to get up to that all important uh, strength eight. I think Axe of Blind Fury, this is probably one of the best ways, albeit you've got to be con for that so you don't want to anger them. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, obviously I kind of prioritise diabol uh, Diabolic Strength on Demon Princes because it makes them awesome. Warp time. Warp, uh, warp charge 6. Pick a heretic star unit within 3 inches of the Psyker. 
This unit can immediately move as if it was the moon phase. And you can only benefit from this once per psychic phase. Oh, work time, how we love you. Uh, yeah, if you have a com uh, Chaos Lord that is a combat beast, then you want to get him where he needs to go. Again, a Demon Prince or Berserker unit, uh, they're seriously going to love this. You know, the Berserkers won't care because they're going to be collecting skulls. Yeah, he's a viable target. It really depends on your armor composition. Uh, but if you've got maybe a retinue going along with him as well, that's also combat monsters. This is a way to go for it as well. Basically, any of these three abilities are kind of good. They will work for Chaos Lord. Are they optimized for the Chaos Lord? Maybe not. Stratagem recommendations. So we're going to start with all important veterans of the Long War. Use a stratagem when a heretic Staris infantry or biker unit is selected to attack in the shooting phase or fight phase, excluding renegades. You can add one to all wound rolls made for the unit until the end of the phase. Awesome stratagem, so versatile. There's a lot of competition over who will get the best out of this. Generally shooting phase, look somewhere else, your Chaos Lord is not that you know aggressive in shooting. Prove me wrong, give me a shooting loadout, uh, I challenge you. Uh, however, in a combat, you may find some use. I generally use this uh, if I had a Chaos Lord facing another character and I wanted to assassinate them, or even on Lightning Claws, I think, as I said before. You know, if you're wounding on 3, plus, uh, activating those mortal wounds on 5, plus, and reroll those wound field wounds, can't be alright. You can use a Power Sword as well if needed. Generally, large amounts of attacks are best for this, but a heavier hitter, a heavier hitter Chaos Lord can be tempting. Really just depends on your army composition, but a great strategy. I'm, I'm like going to talk about it every time. Uh, forward operations, Alpha Legion only. Uh, this one is really long to explain. Basically, if you're planning to sneak an attack in a bunch of guys uh, who can't normally sneak in, uh, keep Chaos Lord with them for those all important uh, reroll ones. So, like I think Corn Berserkers, uh, if they're Alpha Legion, they can sneak in, they are infantry. Have a Chaos Lord near, th near them and they can also uh, reroll ones when they're hitting and the untold carnage just goes nuts. Uh, if you're playing Alpha Legion, you're either, you know, that's one way to play it. Another one is you've got Havoc Squads. Now I got confused by this. Havoc Squads now are the sort of special weapon equivalent of Chosen. You know, you take Havoc and you can arm them all with special weapons. Take them all with plasma guns, infiltrate them in uh, so they're all within rapid fire range. Put your Chaos Lord behind them, and ipso facto, you've got another sort of your combi terminator thing, but with Chaos Space Marines, which are a bit more disposable, though you really don't want to dispose of plasma guns. But having those infiltrate in, along with a Chaos Lord, can be really, really destructive. A good way alpha strike on a vulnerable unit. So yeah, I like that one a lot. Uh, works synergize very well with another unit to maximise those rerolls. Excess of violence, Empress Children. Use this stratagem just before an Empress Children infantry unit attacks in the fight phase. Each time a model in this in your unit slays an enemy model, it can immediately make another hit roll using the same weapon at the same target. Don't benefit from it again, basically. So awesome, really nice if you find things with low toughness and low armor, like horde units, though again, bigger units may see a better advantage, though Death of the Fox Emperor works well here as well. Really like that one, you know, Emperor's Children just being able to rack up the attacks would be really, really nice. So yeah, that's kind of it for the Chaos Lords. So that's a tough one. The Chaos War Lord works really well as long as you know the role you want to achieve. Are you going to re-rolls in the battlefield? Do you keep it cheap or do you put some points to help defend? I think Power Sword's like 4 points, or it may have came up or down or something. It's quite cheap, so maybe stick that on there just for helping. Am I dropping a really dangerous unit and need a Chaos Lord support? Then Jump Pack or Terminator fits the role as well. As for combat stuff, I struggle to see aggressive Chaos Lord versus Dean Prince. Dean Prince is an expensive investment, but the threat it brings is great, and I'm so looking forward to reviewing that in the future. So yeah, I really want to try out Chaos Lord uh, with a gun line uh, Chaos Force and I have a whole bunch of heavy weapons coming for Chaos hopefully in the next month or two. Well, more recently it's going to be awesome and I need to build a Chaos Lord to assist them. And I'd love to try them with a Terminator unit as well 
basically use some of these drop tactics with them as well to work in the best synergy. Interested by Puss Cleaver, I didn't realise that until I wrote that the other night. Uh, I might try that as well. And if you're going aggressive, help me out here guys. You know, I know I'm doing the tactical video, but again, you can let me know. I really like Dean Princes, but if you've got truly mean Chaos Lord builds, let me know. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned. Uh, please comment, share, like and subscribe. I'm very interested to hear what you guys think on this one as well. Check us out on social media and Patreon. We put some stuff up for there as well. And we'll catch you on our Tabletop Salt Battle Report.